Okay, today we're going to talk about a day in the life of a building engineer. So what does a building engineer do? Well, you maintain building infrastructure and code compliance. Um, many times in large commercial industrial applications, there's going to be a BIM uh, software or a, a computer, centralized computer system that monitors the HVAC system, for example, uh, controls the lighting, uh, the security system, etc. Uh, you'll perform regular inspections of life safety systems. So think about like fire extinguishers. Um, emergency lighting, exit signs, um, elevator compliance, you know, your, your, your monthly test of your elevator, phone call system, things like that. Uh, you'll answer daily maintenance requests for building occupants. Um, so maybe you get a hot call that, you know, one office is too warm, or maybe in the wintertime you get People call in and complaining it's not warm enough, the heater is not working, or there's a light bulb that's out, or the elevator doors don't open, etc. Uh, project management. So, say your building needs a new roof, or you're going to re-landscape the front facade of the building, and your boss might ask you to manage that project. Uh, you may or may not have to supply, um, uh, excuse me, take care of uh, supply and parts procurement. So again, you may or may not have to supply the janitor's closet with consumables or parts that the maintenance shop needs. Um, every facility, every company operates a little bit differently. So depending on what company you work for, how big the facility is, some or all of these things may or may not apply to you. Uh, equipment maintenance and repair. So here again, management may expect you to be hands-on and use the tools and perform the repairs yourself, be it plumbing, electrical, HVAC, carpentry, etc. Or you may simply manage a team of maintenance technicians that you instruct what needs to be done or you may outsource everything to external vendors. Again, every company operates a little bit differently. Uh, there's gonna be paperwork. So things like RFQs, RFPs, um, maintaining your maintenance manual library and your maintenance logs for all the equipment in the building and for all your inspections you do in the building. Uh, problem solving, I find, is a big part of being a building engineer. You know, a lot of times management will look to you to come up with uh, solutions that are cost effective, um, that aren't too time consuming. Many times you might have to think outside the box. And a lot of times there'll be delays on with outside vendors. So you might have to, you know, make phone calls, follow up with vendors send and receive emails to and from vendors, suppliers, etc. And last but not least, uh, you may have to maintain a maintenance shop. So keep it organized, keep it well stocked, ensure that you have all the tools and supplies you need to do day-to-day -day operations. So what is an RFP? An RFP is a request for proposal. So let's go over the process. Just a very basic process. Step one would be define the project scope. Uh, the timeline, the budget, the vendors, and the scoring criteria with your team or your manager. You then take that information and you draft your RFP Word document. Make sure you proofread it. You know, you define what the purpose of this proposal is. Uh, give the details of the project and terms and conditions. Uh, you can include time frame, budget information, 
Step three, you then send your request for proposal to multiple vendors that you've uh, vetted or in the process of vetting. Uh, and then you may have to answer their questions. They may receive your proposal and email you back and have a question about something. Uh, you're going to receive responses. Step four would be the review, uh, all of your responses that you received, uh, compare and contrast, you know, the what dollar amount they're, they're going to charge, um, what their time frame is, if they can work within your time frame, etc. Uh, then you inform the vendors if they were not chosen. So once you choose your vendor that you think you're going to be happy with, as a business courtesy, you want to go ahead and contact the vendors that did not make the cut and let them know politely, hey, thanks for your time, thanks for responding, but we, we've chosen this other option. And then lastly, of course, execute the project. RFQ stands for Request for Quote. So let's go over that process. So you can define the part or parts you need or the service that you need. And again, your, what is your timeline, your budget, what are your potential vendors that can help you out, and what scoring criteria are you going to use, and go over that with your team. Step two, draft up the RFQ Word document, proofread it. Um, again, what's the purpose? Give the details and terms and conditions. So things like, you know, I want a price quote for this new electric motor. Or I want a price quote to uh, take care of the landscaping at our facility year-round. Uh, step three, you uh, send your RFQ to multiple vendors. Again, you may have to answer questions from them. Or if you don't hear back from them in a timely manner, you may have to follow up with them. Uh, then you'll receive all the responses. Step four, you'll compare and contrast review all of those responses and you will make a decision or you will send uh, your decision up the management chain of command and they will make the final decision. And then of course inform vendors if they were not chosen. And step five of course execute the service contract or parts procurement. So you see an RFQ and an RFP they're, they're, they're fairly similar. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.